Hello, this is Dad. Today we are now going to do question 3 of 2020. Now we have a cubic curve with a quadratic y term. The curve crosses the x-axis at the origin and the a0 and b0 for some real numbers a is less than 0 and b is greater than 0. The curve only exists for alpha is less than x, less than beta, and for x is greater than gamma. The three points with coordinates alpha, delta, beta, gamma, and gamma, delta are all on the curve. What are the values of a and b? Since they all cross the x-axis, we substitute y equals to 0. Therefore, 0 equals to x cubed minus x. Factorizing the right side, we get x, x minus, x squared minus 1. And if you use the formula from algebra, you will factorize this even further to get x plus 1, x minus 1. So the three x intercepts are minus 1, 0, and 1. Since a is less than 0, a equals to negative 1, and b equals to 1. By completing the square or otherwise, find the value of delta. We are now going to complete the square. What is completing the square? So say you have a square, basically complete you basically complete it by adding this extra bit left over. So let's draw a square. And let's draw another smaller square up top. And we are now going to draw two lines which come from here and from here. So if this is your x squared term and this is your x term, ax, ax, this should be how you complete the square. So this is x plus a and this hidden term here is a squared. So it's so x squared plus 2ax equals 2x plus a squared minus a squared. So let's write this down. So we have successfully derived the completing the square formula. So 2a equals to minus 1 in our case. a equals to negative half. So therefore x squared minus x equals to x minus half squared minus a quarter. So since there can only be one value of x for which there is a one single value of y, this x is half. So, therefore, our delta is our single y coordinate. So, delta equals to half. Explain why the curve is symmetric. So, we are now going to solve this. So, y minus half squared minus a quarter equals to x cubed minus x. We calling the equation so we are now going to move one quarter to the other side so y equals the half plus or minus the square root of x cubed minus x plus a quarter so if x half plus big y on the curve then so is x half minus big y that is our conclusion Find a cubic equation in x which has roots alpha, beta, and gamma. Your expression on the cubic shouldn't involve that. So by the factor theorem and considering this coefficient of x cubed, this cubic must factorize as x minus alpha, x minus beta, x minus gamma. So we calculate the cubic below the square root. So a cubic is x cubed minus x plus a quarter. When expanding the right hand side, the coefficient of x squared equals to minus alpha plus beta plus gamma. Because if we go calculate x minus alpha, x minus beta, x minus gamma, so if we compare the coefficients, we will have alpha, beta and gamma as our coefficients of x squared. So minus alpha plus beta plus gamma equals to zero. And so we can take off the minus side to get alpha plus beta plus gamma equals to zero.
Let's see denote the circle which has the points alpha delta and beta delta as n zonga diameter. Write down the equation of C. The equation of C is given by x minus, so we need to find the average of alpha and beta. It is given by the formula alpha plus beta over 2 squared plus y minus half squared equals 2 beta minus alpha over 2 squared. And so C and S intersect when a quarter plus x cubed minus x minus, since y minus half squared equals to x cubed minus x plus a quarter, so we substitute that minus beta minus alpha over 2 squared plus x minus alpha plus beta over 2 squared equals to 0. Note that alpha and beta already satisfy this. In the third root is zeta, then we have alpha plus beta plus zeta equals to minus 1. Hence, C and S be at two further points with coordinate zeta equals to gamma minus 1. Because if we do draw a circle here, sorry I'm bad at drawing circles, but here we go, you will see that it meets the curve at two further points. I don't know you can discriminate this, but they are about here and here. And since the third root is zeta, then we have alpha plus beta plus zeta equals 2 minus 1. Because that is, because alpha and beta already satisfy this. So, we are done. See you in another MAT video.